Hello, my name's Thomas Keegan. Today's date is June the 22nd, 2012. It's Friday, and I have on the line with me here um, uh, Kalen Fretz, um, and uh, you can visit the website Fretz, F-R-E-T-T-S, for congress.com. Um, I'm with libertarianprogressive.com. And um, so Kalen is uh, running for District 1, U.S. House of Representatives um, for Florida. As a libertarian, he is qualified. He's going to be on the ballots. Um, and so that's some exciting news. His competition's Jeff Miller, who's a Republican, Jim Bryan, who's a Democrat, and, um, and William Drummond II, uh, part of the Reform Party. So it looks like um, it's not just going to be the typical Democrat or Republican um, that you'll have the choice to choose from. As uh, Jesse Ventura has a new book called The Bloods and the Crips, um, and, you know, their colors are red and blue, just like the Republicans and the Democrats. And um, so we'll have some more choices. And, uh, Kellen Fretz, it's uh, a pleasure. Thank you for doing this interview. And um, I understand that you're driving right now, and uh, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, so drive safe, but um, nice to meet you. And uh, so as an introduction, I think it would be um, pretty fair to ask um, what drives you, what uh you know, gets you up early in the morning, uh, what keeps you up late at night, um, why you're running, sir? Well, hey, thanks for having me on. I, that was a, a good introduction there. Uh, the Reform Party candidate in my race is actually a write-in candidate, so he won't be on the ballot, but uh, he, is, he is an official qualified candidate. But anyways, uh, what drives me? Well, I would say, uh, you know, there, there's really a lot of things that drive me. I, I've been, you know, really... Uh, Actually, like you said, staying up late at night, uh, researching just liberty uh, for, for years now. And uh, I really got motivated when I realized that you know, our, our government was supposed to be following the Constitution and just plain out was not. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the reason why I do this is, is you know, for, for my family. Uh, I, I want my children to, to grow up and, and have the, you know, the same blessings of liberty as I was blessed to grow up with and, you know, my parents, grandparents. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, as, as each generation comes and goes now, it seems like we're losing not just a little more liberty, but, but all of a sudden we're losing a lot more liberty, especially over the past, uh, you know, 10 years. Um, <clears throat> so really I would say what drives me is, is you know, ensuring that, uh, you know, my future, you know, children and, and grandchildren on down the line are able to, you know, have a good quality of life and uh, and enjoy the same blessings of liberty that, that we were able to enjoy. Hey, Kalen, that's, um, that sounds very nice, and uh, that's um, so true. I mean, I'm glad you made that point about the future prosperity because, I mean, think about it. If we, who I don't know how we are chosen to be born in the in the bodies that we are at the times we are but i mean you could have been born in um you, you know germany in the 1930s you could have been born during the um you know the inquisition ages uh, and stuff like that luckily we we're born in the united states um in the beginning of the 21st century but it does look like uh the empire is um the, the fall of the, of the roman empire here uh, or a possibility i mean for those who've studied history there are some um things that uh, we can take warnings from in history and um and so you know, whoever's going to be born in the future, we want them to be born, like, in a nice place. We don't want them to be born in uh, something that's, um, y you know, uh, that, that that's not as good. So, um, and Absolutely. Appreciate that. I see here that um, uh, you're, you're in Florida. Um, you were born in Pittsburgh. Is that right? And uh, this is on your website, Meet Kalen, which you can visit. And you um, went to uh, Virginia Tech and got a degree in computer science and are an entrepreneur. And uh, That's correct. happily married, and um, so we appreciate uh, you in this race. Now let's get to the issues because that's usually why most people. That's the first thing I look at on a website uh, of someone who's running for office is is the issues, and um, we'll look at some of the issues on your website. Some of the big issues I think that's going on um, is the budget. Uh, whether you're running for federal office or in the states, it seems like everyone has a concern about the budget. Um, just uh, do you have any um, thoughts or discussion um, points that you'd like to make on the budget, sir? Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, I think the first and, and just most obvious issue is that the, there should be a balanced budget at a federal level. Uh, all but, I believe, one 
of the uh, state actually runs on a, on a balanced balance budget, but uh, the federal government can't be bothered to, you know, balance its own books. And I, I think that's really uh, one of the things that's starting to drive this country into the ground. Um, and it, it's really, it's, it's kind of started going up at an exponential rate now. Um, and it's really just, you know, based on a, a, a Keynesian view of, of spending. And, uh, you know, John Maynard Keynes himself said uh, there's no need to worry about the, the future because in the end we'll all be dead. So, you know, just the next generation would have to have to deal with the problems that all the, sp- the spending of the previous generation created. And, and he was absolutely right about that. Uh, you know, now we're having to deal with, with this debt issue. And, uh, you know, we're, we're spending, I, b- I believe, 43% uh, That's on the dollar. Gary it, Johnson it, it, says, uh, yeah, I'm sorry it, to interject. Exactly. Yeah, he says we sp- every 43 cents that we spend um, is, is borrowed money. Uh, please continue. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, the deficit spending is, is really just a, a terrible tragedy. And, uh, you know, people try to justify it by saying, oh, we, well, we have, to, we have to borrow from China to, you know, ensure our own national security, which is just a contradiction and a half, because anyone that, that understands history, as, as you mentioned before, uh, you know, the Roman Empire made the same mistake of uh, overspending, spreading themselves too thin, and, uh, you know, what, the, the true, the, the defense of a country is, is not number one in their military, it's in their economy and their, the, the strength of their, uh, you know, economy and their ability to uh, overcome hardship. And so when we are completely indebted to, to other countries like China, um, who we say we're, we're, we have to be defended against, that's really just a contradiction. And so uh, all I'm saying is that, you know, the, the, well, the those are, government needs to... Yeah, we don't even have to go far as back as the Roman Empire. I mean, we could look at the Soviet um, uh, Empire that, that crumbled. And, and these were some points that I think um, Ron Paul made uh, on the uh, campaign. You can't separate foreign policy from the economy. I mean, so people exactly that are right. trying to separate it, it's all one and the same. It's more of a holistic approach, I think, that you're taking. I mean, if you just look at our biggest security threat is our um, our budgets and um, and who might take us over? I mean, whoever we owe the money to. So, uh, yeah, that's it's a military threat. And just like civil liberties, I mean, you can't separate that from the economy. I mean, if you look at um, how, uh, you know, Einstein could have gone to any country he, he went to, right? But he went to the United States, and so did a lot of inventors or people that are entrepreneurs. They want to come here because they feel free, and then there's a confidence in the protections of our Bill of Rights. And that's that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, now a lot of those same, you know, entrepreneurial minds that, that would have come to the United States maybe 50 years ago, now they're going to other places like the Philippines or you know, China even. And, uh, you know, that's really having a, a terrible effect on, you know, our lo- long-term sustainability of, of the United States. Uh, and it's really, it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense on any level, uh, the, the type of things that, that are being done, you know, in this country economically. Uh, but, but your point about, you know, uh, foreign policy and, and uh, domestic policy uh, not being inseparable, uh, I'm sorry, not being separable, is, is absolutely valid. I mean, it, it, it all really comes down to uh, the question of liberty. Are you going to allow people to, uh, you know, enjoy liberty, or, or are you going to tell people how, uh, how to live their lives and, and what to do with their lives? And when you start trying to, to nitpick and saying, well, we're, we're, we're only going to intervene in somebody's life this far, and then, uh, you know, we're going to let them make their own choices in this little area, but not here. Well, uh, you know, I think that's really best uh, shown by something called the Nolan chart, which I'm sure you're familiar with, um, which kind of charts the the ideas of the quote conservatives on the on the right end of the scale, and then the quote liberals on the left end of the scale. Right. And and really, all they all I'm they do is that, if someone who doesn't know what that is, I'm looking that on your website. But you basically fill out questions, and it's like a little grid. And in the middle, you're a centrist. If your agrees or your you know your issues or opinions are more libertarian, then yeah, you'll be more on that part of the charts and and left and rights and exactly. Go right. ahead. Go ahead, sir. Yep. Right, and it's and it's it's really you know the the 
window of debate in this country has has become so you know if you're looking at the Nolan chart, it's it's been pushed towards the very bottom, towards the the statist solutions for everything. So there's a very small spectrum of of you know what's uh, you know what's kosher and the uh, and the national debate, and it's, so you can either have a little bit less freedom here or a little bit less freedom here, but the solution that it says let's actually have all the freedom that's you know kind of been pushed out of the, out of the debate so that's what i'm trying to restore is is the the reality that you can't separate uh the the issues of liberty and, and to and the little separate sections you you have to really be all or nothing or, or you just end up in this gray area yeah so if you want to fix the economy and the budget sometimes it's not just a simple matter of um of nickels and dimes and looking at um line by line it, it's just the whole um uh, how, how we're going to live. I, I mean, so if we're going to fund an empire and if we're going to, um, y y you know, the, uh, s some of the other things that we're talking about, uh, just um, control everyone's lives, uh, then, and go into their civil liberties and, and invade houses uh, for people um, that are, are nonviolent, uh, quote unquote, criminals and uh, things like that, and invade businesses because of some deal. Like I, I'm sure you heard about the um, Gibson guitars and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't heard about that, you have to YouTube Gibson guitars, and I'm sure, um, or Google it, and I'm sure you'll find some articles on what happened to them this past summer. But I mean, things like that, the civil liberties. I mean that's going to affect our economy and so let's and and so that's a little bit about the foreign policy um, i mean what do you believe in our what our foreign policy should uh be um in our foreign um like how we should handle that i guess how we which you know what kind of uh um laws would you support what would you champion um what what what's your philosophy on um how we deal with other countries basically what our relationships are I would I would best describe myself as a non-interventionist, and I, it, there's a lot of misunderstanding uh, in the public as to what non-interventionism is, and a lot of times people conflate it or confuse it with isolationism, and it's it's really actually the exact opposite of that. Um, iso isolationism says that you should completely wall yourself uh, your your country off from other countries, and and just deal with your yourself on all issues. Uh, Non-interventionism, which is what I'm a proponent of, says that you should be uh, friendly towards as many countries as possible. You you should be open and and uh, you know, try to trade with other countries and, and try to have diplomacy with other countries. And that really uh, is is you know what leads to the best prosperity, not just for our own country but for other countries as well. Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you this. Do, it's, do you think uh, it's possible that we could possibly trade with Iran? I, I do think it's possible. Um, I, I mean, we can trade right with now, China, right? So, I mean, we could, de right. and, and instead of making blockades, maybe instead of spending money on trying to deal with them, maybe we could actually make some money off of them by trading with them. <laughs> right, absolutely. Well, it's debatable that you know certain certain groups make money off of you know us uh, having bad relations with Iran, but um, the, it, absolutely you know uh, sanctions on on other countries and uh, you know embargoes and things of that nature, just like we have uh, you know with Cuba, it really doesn't hurt the uh, the leaders of those countries who who were trying to you know, uh, punish, it, it, it actually just ends up hurting the, the innocent citizens and civilians and women and children of that, of those countries. And, uh, you know, it, it generally doesn't have much of a good effect on us either. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm for, you know, trying to be diplomatic and, and having free trade with other countries. And, and there's no, there's no question that, you know, there are leaders of some countries who, um, are illogical or, or that we don't see eye to eye with. But you you can you can separate you know how we have relations with other countries, uh, leaders of other countries, versus how we interact with their citizenry, and it's and it's generally you know two completely different things. Well, that's that's true, and and, and so I mean, being open-minded to to 
trading with them. And plus, if they ever did attack us then or something like that, or if we ever had more of a suspicion being this open to them, um, we would have more of the moral arguments as, as well. And, um, and and the whole world would probably condemn them, you, you, you know, if... Uh, Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so we... Uh, um, and um, so those are some interesting things to think about, some kind of refreshing ideas, um, you know, using war maybe as a last option. I mean, doesn't mean... W w do you, now, you do believe there is a place for the military. I mean, how do you envision the military um, under ideal conditions? What kind of military? Sure, I, a, absolutely. I I believe in the military wholeheartedly. My uh, my brother currently serves in the military, and uh, you know I I really just take the constitutionalist position on on really uh, you know all of my uh, issues. I one of my my main things I'm trying to do is restore the constitution. Uh, you know we have the left, quote unquote left, who, who generally just disregard the Constitution, and then the quote-unquote right, who, you know, says that they like the Constitution but don't actually support it. So uh, the libertarian solution is to actually, uh, you know, follow the Constitution, which... Uh, and why you know, is they, the uh, may I ask you, why is following the Constitution, why do you think following the Constitution is important um, for, like, our society and, and life? The Constitution is the supreme... Uh, law of the land, and when we have, it, it, it tells the federal government what it's allowed to do, and probably more importantly, what it's not allowed to do. Um, you know, when it comes to the Congress, the, the things that the Congress is allowed to do are clearly defined there in the Constitution, and uh, the Ninth and Tenth Amendments clearly state that anything not defined there in the Constitution is not able to be done by the federal government. It, it's left to the, the states or the people respectively. And so you know, when we have a federal government that is ignoring the Constitution, it's ignoring the document that is, it was set there to, to give us an idea of what our own rights were. And, uh, you know, it, it, the idea of the Constitution was to protect our rights from the federal government. Um, so, so when we have a federal government that's ignoring the Constitution, it's ignoring our rights, it's infringing upon our rights, and that's really, you know, the, the rule of law breaks down, and we become a country of men, not of laws. And yeah. so th that's really the problem, uh, you know. What, I think what, you said what, right there, we, we, became, we become a country of, of men and, and not laws, and... Um, I, uh, that, that, that's, that's the main point. I mean, people have to have confidence, um, in, in the society that they live in. If there's no confidence in something, I mean, the dollar's just there because people have confidence in it. And, and, Absolutely. So, and so are our laws. And so that's why it's there. I mean, if there's going to be any change, it has to be done the right way by all the different branches voting on it and introducing new amendments. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't champion changes or new amendments. It just means right. that if it does get passed the right way, then people have full confidence in it. Um, that's kind of a legislative term, like no confidence, like we have no confidence that we got to have confidence in that. And, and that's that's an important thing because it's just, because it's fair. And uh, and it right. you know, has the separation of powers, um, checks and balances. And um, so that's uh, vital. Uh, um, and um, so there's... That's right. And, and, and to get back to your, your question on the war, because I kind of, went off on a, on a little tangent there, but, uh, you know, uh, war A has to be declared by the Congress, and, and that's something that has not been done, believe it or not, in this country since World War II. Uh, you know, we've gotten into these uh, conflicts, which we call wars, but aren't actually wars, and, and that's completely unconstitutional. Um, so, so that's one of the, uh, you know, precursors to, to uh, declarations of war that absolutely has to happen and just hasn't happened. And, uh, you know, we've actually seen a, a, a uh, congressman in North Carolina who has introduced a bill to and, and impeach the president if he tries to, uh, you know, invade other countries I without... I believe he's uh, from North Carolina. Uh, uh, um, I forgot his name, but, uh, yeah. Right. Walter Jones, I believe. That's, yep, that's it. And, uh, and yeah, he's, uh, he's, you know, saying that the, the president has to come to the Congress to declare war. And it's right there in uh, the Constitution and uh, not to mention the uh, War Powers Act. So all, all he's trying I mean, to is do the is the president is, is above the law. I mean, is the president above the law or, or not? I mean, no, so, you're right, is anybody right, above right. the law? Is anyone above the law? Um, no, not even not even the the quote king. And and you know that's that was one of the reasons really why uh, our constitutional system of government was created because 
and England, the king was above the law. He, 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 you know, did his own thing, and he could uh, come into your home, and uh, you know, basically, I mean, you didn't really have any rights, and and that's what our founding fathers were sick of, and and that's why they created the Constitution. Well, here's a thought: instead of being lapdogs for people who are breaking the law and expect to get away with it, how about holding people accountable, and 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 maybe you, you know just. Uh, have more respect for the law itself because a lot of people right. have um, uh, courageously and out of necessity, um, uh, you know, sacrificed for that um, because of uh, things that happened in past history from learning on the from the past. It's an intelligent system. And um, so what, what about now you're libertarian. So um, here's something. And I think a couple things you said. Um, a lot of people from the right or the left, I mean, if you're, this used to be the conservative platform, and um, a long time ago, I mean, there used to be just liberals, you know, then it kind of branched off to classical liberals and progressives, and um, so a lot of, you know, I hope you do get some support from the so-called left on, on some of these issues. I mean, it's better than choosing a Republican or a Democrat. So, I mean, if you're going right. to, you know, vote to, to have a common sense um, foreign policy, I mean, if you're going to you know, cut the budgets on and not give, you know, perks to special interests. And if you're going to respect civil liberties um, right. and the Bill of Rights, I mean, that's a very strong argument right there, even if you don't agree with all the issues. I mean, that's um, I think there's more weighing on that balance of choice who you have. Uh, and I think you, a lot of people would agree with you more. Um, what about civil liberties? I mean, do you, um, is, has anything that made you decide to run it was civil liberties uh, part of that sure absolutely absolutely that's it, uh you know it's it's all uh one big issue for me and, and and it's the question of liberty like i like i mentioned earlier but uh civil liberties is, is just as important as as the economic liberty aspect and you know we we have the uh well the patriot act of course uh, you know, which led the federal government wiretap, uh, you know, NFC people's phones. And, uh, you know, for the most part, people just kind of went along with it because, hey, it was called the Patriot Act, so it had to be patriotic. And, uh, you know, we, we, we realize now that, you know, it just kind of got the, the federal government's foot in the door, and they just expand that power. They always do. Uh, the, I believe it was uh, Thomas Jefferson that said the natural tendency of government is, to get, is for uh, liberty to yield and government to gain ground. And that's always what happens when the government gets its foot in the door. It just pushes it further and further open. And uh, you, so we have the Patriot Act. We have this new uh, National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, which uh, gives the, the President of the United States the uh, illegal power to uh, indefinitely detain any American citizen without trial, without due process, a clear violation of the uh, Bill of Rights. And believe it or not, the, the Senate actually debated on the uh, Senate floor whether or not this did apply to U.S. citizens, and they did uh, come to the conclusion that it did you know apply what? to that, U.S. citizens. That should be the standard bearer right there. Any person who voted for that needs to go. I, I mean, that's if Absolutely. you want a litmus test, right? I mean, there's plenty of litmus tests, but, but that's a clear and cut dry one. I mean, it, it's, we have the right to know who's charging us, what the evidence is um, and, and what the charges are. I mean, you can't be just charged for something that we can't disclose. I mean, you're just going to be charged with, uh, you know, with a big question mark, you know, and then That's right. be able to keep someone in jail. Like, they probably could, you know, blindfold somebody and, and ship them off to, like, you know, Egypt or someplace where they get tortured, and, um, and right. you'll never know what happened to that person. I mean, it's uh, so you have to have access to a lawyer. I mean, these are rights that we have. These are rights that make people like Einstein want to come here. These are rights that, you know, let us enjoy life. And uh, that's right. It's uh, so. How, how about this? Um, just some um, going down some different issues. Actually, here's a, one other one. What about? Have you heard of like um, a sunset clause for laws? Do you think that's a good idea for? Absolutely. That's one of the things I'm for. And I, I'm not sure if I've listed that on my website there yet. I, I think I may. I think it is on my website. Uh, but but yes, I am for a sunset, a federal sunset provision. I would like to see them expire every 20 years um and and what that does is it forces that law back into the public debate so yeah. they can, you know the way the way the things are done now 
the Congress just kind of, uh, you know, doesn't really have to debate certain laws. They're just automatically renewed. And, uh, you know, that's also not the way that, that uh, you know, our, our, our government was intended to be run. And so when you, when you have that, uh, you know, forcing the questions back into the debate every 20 years, then you really see, you know, you make uh, your representatives come out of the woodwork and see where they stand on certain issues. Yeah, and I mean, if it's really important, then people will get behind it and vote for it. If it's somewhat important and needs to be tweaked, they'll be able, they'll be forced to go back to it. And if it's something that, you know, we really, it wasn't a good idea, at least if they didn't have the courage to vote it off before the 20 years, I think it should be maybe 10 or 15 years, but it, at least it'll just expire, you, you know? That's so, right. And so Absolutely. And, and, the, and the, the length of time, you know, is, is debatable, you know, 20, I, I I personally would be okay with 10 um, or, or 15, but, you know, I, I'm saying 20 just because, you know, that's what we have laws where, like, you know, you can't, like, tie your alligator, like, to a fire <laughs> hydrant and stuff like that. And, and yeah, that's like right. People are too lazy and apathetic or, or whatever. Um, they're just um, distracted, too distracted to pass stuff like that. I mean, you know, it was that's right. um, Al Capone wasn't, uh, you, you know, he didn't go to jail because he killed people. Um, he went because he broke the uh, tax code. And um, <laughs> right, right. Do you, what do you think about the fair tax? Um, I mean, you might not even want any tax, but what do you think? Do you have any thoughts about the fair tax? Uh, just I, I, having I, I, a sales I, tax, just no income tax whatsoever, just right. pure sales tax. That's what the fair tax is. Yeah, I'm I'm pro fair tax. Um, I'm completely anti our uh, you know the the current system we have with the IRS. Um, you know the, the the fair tax really is a constitutional tax, uh, and and the constitution as was, as it was originally written, um, there was you know no clause for a income tax, no clause on you know uh, just the product of your labor. You know, right now we work, uh, I think, uh, about four, four and a half months uh, of every year just to pay off the federal government. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely pro-sales tax. I think it, uh, again, puts puts all of those, uh, you know, the taxes that you're paying for right there on your uh, bill every time you pay. And so you're, you're really seeing what the uh, federal government is taking from you every every time you go to the grocery store, and, uh, you know, that, again, forces the budget back into the debate. And also, I mean, it would take maybe a couple months or maybe less than a year for the prices to stabilize, but I mean, the people would, you know, the, the prices would adjust to, to make it fair, and I think there are some things in the fair tax to make it somewhat like you get some vouchers or something like that, but um, and just imagine how many businesses would come here and, and how many businesses would thrive I mean, it would be um, insane. We would be a country with no corporate tax whatsoever. I mean, right. wouldn't wouldn't there be a flood? Like we're talking about immigration problems um, in the last ten years or so, we would have an immigration problem of like businesses coming here, wouldn't we? We, I mean, it'd be crazy <laughs> how many would be. Yeah, I, I I absolutely think that uh, you know if if we did make the it, it really comes down to a, a, a higher question of, of just applying the rule of law evenly you know right now uh you know the the mid-sized businesses are taxed at an extremely high level but then of course the the super huge businesses they have you know powerful enough uh uh you know uh, attorneys and, and and people of that nature to to be able to to find the loopholes and and actually really pay a, a very small amount of taxes and so it's it's really just an unjust system. Not even not even getting into the question of you know how how much uh, you know tax day costs all Americans. You know everybody either has to do their own taxes and you know no, usually spend people, days it, and days on that, or you have to pay hundreds of dollars to have someone else do it. Yeah, or just have the the, the scare of like a possible audit or something like that. That's right. And, and just right. you know that's enough to. You know, um, yeah. So uh, that's uh, that's a good, um, yeah. So I won't even say it, but it's. Um, so what? What to about that, to that to that point? I, I just uh, you know, people being scared of being audited. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for quotes. I, I think uh, you know the the great men of our past really had a, a great grasp of what was going on. But you know, I I, I think this was a George Washington quote. He said. Uh, when the government fears the people, there's liberty. But when the people fear the government, there's 
tyranny. Yeah. And, you know, we're at that point where, like you said, people are scared of being audited. People are scared of this and that from the federal government. That's and so and that's called tyranny. That's a perfect thing. I mean, maybe you should put that on your website. So that, that's, you know, that kind of just brings it home right there, just in one sentence. Yeah. I, I like that one a lot. Um, and uh, so that, that, that's a good point. I mean, so whether you're, what your political spectrum is, I mean, isn't that the main point right there, not fearing your government? The government should fear Absolutely. the people right there. And um, right. so as far as economics go, I mean, people in the Occupy Wall Street, talking about the 1%, the 99%. But, I mean, I'm sure, you know, being a libertarian, you're happy when people have success. But what about people that, um, you know, and you're talking about mid-sized businesses, like, if we'd never bailed out any of the banks and maybe let some of these mid-sized and small banks that didn't need the bailouts be able to take over some of these other banks, I mean, we might have been out of the, um, you know, uh, recession, depression right now. I mean, um, so. That's right. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's right. That's, that's exactly how, you know, a, a real free market works. You know, when, uh, when there's a, you know, a large business that's making terrible uh, business decisions over and over again, and even committing fraud, uh, crimes as, and, and fraud, as, as it's now you know been shown that that many of those large banks were. But you know, even if, if that wasn't the case and they were just making bad business decisions, well, they go bankrupt. Another firm buys them for their market value, and uh, that firm you know reorganizes and and uh, makes it, makes them more efficient, and uh, our economy becomes better as part of that. But what we have instead is, uh, you know, we have huge companies failing. Well, what we have and then, instead uh, is just totally fantasy. I mean, what we have instead is, like, if I was Jimmy Johnson, coach of the Dallas Cowboys, and I kept on putting the guy on the field who kept on fumbling and expecting to get to the <laughs> Super Bowl, I'm just in completely, you know, in some kind of twilight zone fantasy world. I mean, that's just not going to work. I mean, if I keep rewarding failure, you know, from the uh, energy and efforts of the people who are practicing Hard each time, yeah, that's that that just can't work. Um, that's fiction. But um, so it's now the individual mandate. I, I'm sure you're against that. Hopefully, the Supreme Court yeah. takes care of that soon, and I'm sure you'll be voting against that. Um, would do you think um, on these some of these issues? Though, I mean, um, do you think you'll re try to reach across the aisle to some of like on certain issues like civil liberties and things like that? Oh sure, yeah. I, I would I would reach across the aisle on every issue. Uh, truly, you know, I, I would like for uh, you know, if I were to be elected, I would like for my colleagues to understand, you know, the whole idea of liberty as well. And and I don't think that the majority of those guys in office do understand liberty. I, some of them probably do and just don't care. Um, and but I think the majority of them don't. And so. If you can, you know, reach out to people and explain, A, how, you know, the, the positions they hold are, you know, unconstitutional, and B, how they're just plain old bad ideas, and, they, and they're not, they don't actually, uh, you know, help anybody. They don't help the little guy. Every once in a while, you know, sometimes they, they help the uh, special interests. Uh, actually, a lot of the time that's the case. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's, I, I would absolutely, you know, reach out across the aisle and, and, and try to find common ground on, uh, you know, any, any issue that anybody was open to, but, the, uh, but I will not compromise my principles. Oh, so uh, it, it, I it, it, would, it would be either them coming into my camp or, you know, I, 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 I'm not afraid to stand alone either. And, and and not afraid to debate either, you know. So right, let absolutely. Just fall where, where they may, and uh, and sometimes you can build somewhat of a rapport with some people, and and, and, and even though you don't agree with everything, you know, so you can have uh, good debates and not have to agree, and um, and that's the First Amendment, and um, and just respecting the, the the main Bill of Rights, which we all um, agree with those uh, Bill of Rights, and um, that's right. Now, here's some word associations, and then I'm just uh, close it up on running as an independent and, 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 and your vision. Um, just uh, just quick, um, just, you know, just kind of like word associations. You can expand on it if you want. Um, what about industrial hemp? Deregulate. Yeah, it's a shame that we and, have to... And decriminalize. Them. Yeah, so you're actually going to free people um you're going to free absolutely people. that's 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 the common ground a common thread and everything i want to do is free people i you know uh, if you look back at the history of when uh you know the the hemp was uh made illegal in this country it, it was because 
uh, you know, certain industries lobbied to have it illegal because it was affecting their profit margin. And uh, they were successful, and it became illegal. And now, you know, nobody even really knows why it's illegal. It just is. So, it's yeah, absolutely, that, that should be decriminalized. Yeah, it's a racket. It, it's, it should have been sunsetted. If it, this had the sunset right. law, maybe people, it, it wouldn't be there. It, it's, I think it's a psychological right. thing, too, because having something illegal, why people don't even know why it's illegal, it, it kind of has to do something to, I mean, people's psyche. I mean, hemp, if ever, or anyone's looked it up, doesn't even, um, get you high. It's um, watch hemp, right. hemp for victory. I mean, it, it's it's an industrial plant. Um, That's right. In, yeah, I think Ron Paul says you have to smoke a, a, a hemp joint the size of a telephone pole. If you were going <laughs> to make a genetically modified plant to be the perfect industrial plant, I mean, this would be come as close as it could get. So I, I yeah, mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 almost like it's made to help. Um, build up a society. And what, in the Second Amendment, I'm sure that uh, you believe in our rights to uh, bear arms and protect ourselves, you, you know. Absolutely. I, I'm actually uh, probably the most pro-Second Amendment person I am aware of. Um, I, I believe that the Second Amendment is very clear when it says the right to bear arms shall not be infringed, period. Well, here's a point. And, uh, I mean, would the government need to have a law like that about themselves. I mean, that's, you know, would the government say, like, would the military has a right to bear arms? I mean, of course not. Um, so right, it's obviously right. written for the people. Um, and uh, It was. It was. And, and it was the, the point, you know, I mean, the original... The other ones are, the freedom of speech is, so why wouldn't the Second Amendment be, you know? That's right. That's right. And and uh, the the Second Amendment was, was written uh, because the people were the militia, the people were were the ones who would defend their country from tyranny, uh, both from foreign tyranny and domestic tyranny. And uh, you know, I, so I'm actually in favor of uh, a federal law. And uh, this is one of the rare times you'll hear me say a federal law. Uh, it, it shouldn't even be necessary because the Second Amendment is very clear. But I'm in favor of, of a federal law uh, preempting all state gun regulations and uh, allowing all citizens to carry firearms just as they are supposed to be constitutionally. Well, anyone who's keeping a check on government is part of uh, militia, freedom fighters. Martin Luther King Jr. That's right. part of the militia. Ralph Nader, for trying to protect our consumer rights, part of the militia. A anyone is, um, you know, lawyers That's doing right. pro bono work. They're part of the militia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so what about NASA, though? I mean, so um, do you think um, we should be funding NASA? I mean, uh, especially when other countries like the Russia and China are. Um, what do you think about NASA? And also being from Florida, that's a kind of a tough <laughs> right, <question>. right. <laughs> yeah, uh, NASA is an is an interesting question. I actually, there are certainly you know some uh, defense related areas of NASA that uh, could fall under the the Department of Defense. However, I generally believe that uh, the the types of things that NASA is uh, is doing, you know, uh, exploring other planets and and uh, things like that. While it is important for uh, for our country's growth and and you know scientifically uh, things like that, I would like to see those type of things handled by the uh, the private industries in this country. And and I'm absolutely certain they can find ways to to profit off of that. And uh, you know, really, they're the ones who who innovate and uh, you know bring about new discoveries in in all fields, not just. Uh, you know, outer space, but uh, but yeah, I, I I'm I'm a big proponent of uh, letting private private industry and uh, you know voluntary organizations uh, handle handle issues like that. Okay, that makes sense, and and there are pe and I don't think it definitely could should be restricted. I mean, I know Richard Branson from Virgin Enterprises wants to go up there and have a mission to Mars, and there's other people. The guy from PayPal wants to go up there or Google right. or something like that. So, and tourism, I mean, that's one of the biggest industry. We have that between the continents, and we, you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't have tourism in outer space. Um, and that's uh, right. but I think it, it, you know, there is a case to understand the solar flare cycles. There might be a case. To, to, to try to prevent, like, a meteorite from crashing into us and stuff like that. But that would probably, you know, you could argue that could go under defense and, and things like right. that. Um, so and, 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 I, and I think my, you know, the, uh, the bigger issue there is that we do have to cut spending. We have to cut a lot of spending. And so we have to prioritize. And, 
you know, uh, for me, a the possibility of a meteor crashing into the Earth is, is you know, less important than, you know, the, the extreme probability that our economy will crash if we don't do, do something about the budget. Yeah, you have to have priorities, and and that that's true. And um, so, and we all do have to build up coalitions too, and also, um, you know, try to present the best arguments that we can. That's you know, right. That from where we come from, and let the let just let the truth win. You, you know, and uh, absolutely. What about um, now? Internet privacy, SOPA, PIPA. I mean, uh, those um, almost passed Congress, um, except people started calling their members of Congress, um, and I, you know. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, Internet? Yeah, I, I think there are terrible ideas. Um, they're really just another infringement on privacy. Uh, you know, the Internet has been really kind of the one area where the government hasn't been able to, to get a, a stronghold. Uh, you know what? It's uh, been one of the most successful areas. That's, that's exactly right. The Internet has, has led to so much innovation, so much new, you know, capital formation and... Uh, and, and the government's, you know, trying to get their foot in the door, just like with the Patriot Act, just like with other things. They're trying to get that foot in the door. And, uh, you know, they, they want ways to tax the Internet. They want ways to regulate the Internet. You and uh, you know, I, I think also a, a big part of why they, they want to get their foot in the door there is because the ideas of freedom are really starting to spread. And, and our, the majority of people in our government don't like freedom. Yeah, and, and anyone, um, like, uh, concerned about the debates um, that they say, like, it, well, you know, certain, like, utility departments should be, um, you, you know, have a vulnerability. Well, they shouldn't even be connected to the Internet anyways. You know, they should that's be on exactly their private, right. you know, network or something. I mean, so that's, that's, that's a false argument. Most of them are on their private, you know, network. So they're not part of the Internet anyways. So it's been That's working. right, and, and it was actually, uh, I, I made that exact same point that you just made. I, I believe it was Senator uh, Byrd made the point that, you know, the, uh, I, I think it was DOD databases were being hacked by, you know, out people on the Internet. And I was, and my immediate reaction was, well, take those databases off the Internet. Exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's really very simple. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's instead of just like, you know, getting rid, shredding our constitution and and, and, and and doing that, why not just take them off the thing? I mean, it's the same thing with exactly. airport security. They could have just put, you, you know, cockpit doors, and that would have solved the issue right there. I mean, instead of you know, frisking people right. and and, and uh, invading their uh, p privacy. Um, well, um, absolutely. And uh, so, the. Um, how about uh, abortion? Um, have any opinions on that? I know that's a hot topic, but you know what? A lot of people, um, you, you know, might feel kind of jaded if that wasn't brought up. So, yeah, that's that's certainly a hot topic. It's also a uh, very important topic. Um, I actually just uh, published my answers to the National Right to Life questionnaire. Uh, they sent me a questionnaire uh, just just last week, but. Uh, my my stance on that is that the federal government should have absolutely no involvement. Um, I, I believe it's a state issue, and it should be uh, handled just like all other criminal issues are handled at the state level. And that's kind of a way of saying, like, that's kind of the same thing as no taxpayer funds going to it or just, you know... If Absolutely. a state, that way there's 50 laboratories of freedom. If, if something's, you know, you know, if people feel spiritually a bad thing, then, then it's just going to affect that state or, or if other people are for it. So that way, you know, it doesn't affect everyone um, completely with a blanket, I suppose. And um, now what about, like, right. cases of, how do you feel about in cases of rape and, and incest and, and things like that, life of the mother, to be you know, specific about that, the same, or do you think those are exceptions where they would have a Yeah, uh, I, I still, you know, that's, uh, seeing as a, it's, for me, it's a state issue, that's, okay. um, oh, yeah, a, that's a right. question that's right. that would be handled right. by the state. I appreciate you staying on focus, and actually, you know what, that, that's a good, good, good thing, it, it's just stay on focus, it's, it's not really, you believe it should be at the state issue, right, so, um. That, that's right, and I, you know, of course, I have, uh, personal feelings about it, but, it, you know, as a question of, uh, it, it, you know, an actual policy, that's, that's something that I believe should be out of the purview of, you know, the U.S. Congress. Yeah, and honestly, it's it's probably nothing's probably it's probably going to have the status quo a little bit. My personal view is that you know we need to take care of some of the other issues 
first, and maybe that's not going to be as much of an issue in the future. But um, but you, you know, for a lot of people, it is important, and uh, and um, it's to me, it's, it's it's a very tough one because I can understand if if, if you kill someone. I, I mean, if you have an abortion, a doctor could be charged with negligence or something like that. Or if you kill someone and, and the baby dies inside the womb, that would be charged as a crime for killing two people right. um but right. uh, i think there yeah. are situations and 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 and, and um where you, you know there but that's so we'll move on from that because i it's to me honestly i think um that's something that there's equal um opinions on both sides which means it's going to be at the status quo for a while and and so i think people just it might be something that you know i can honestly say i, I just don't personally have an opinion on, on it yet because of those things to weigh out but um right and, and, and that's why i say handle it at the state level right. just like we have handle other crimes you know uh, different uh states have different you know uh length of punishment for things like murder and things like that and i and i believe that uh we should allow the the states to take care of that and that's really you know the, the whole first of all it's it, that's the constitutional position and uh, second of all, that's just the, the best way to handle it from a, from an idea, a libertarian and constitutional idea of local governance. But you are a person and an individual, and you do have ideas. So it's not like you know you're some kind of robot who you know doesn't have ideas and stuff. You do have ideas, and um, and what they are, um, you, you know, we should be proud of those ideas, championing them, and and, and and put them to the test, you, you know, and 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 see if they right. stand up. Um, and uh, so we've covered a lot of this, and obviously the Patriot Act. Um, you know, that's a violation of our um, n natural rights and, and God-given rights. That's right. Um, uh, so basically, um, what else there is now? The libertarian platform. You did put that on your your website, and uh, and that's interesting because if you just look at um, the libertarian platform, people should look at it. I think there's ten points on it, and you might be surprised. Yep. And they're actually pretty um, they're pretty good. They, they I won't go through them now. You can look that up at LP. Uh, I think it's .org, and um, and those. I think they're pretty much things that people can uh, agree upon. Um, and now, what about um, running as an independent third party? A lot of people, to me, I think there's three main reasons why people don't. Um, they they keep electing, even though the the, the biggest um, party or non-party actually is no party affiliation. There's more no party affiliation or independents than there are of Republicans, or I call them Republicrats or Demlicans. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, but, but yet, um, and, and they're shrinking, and their approval rating in Congress, the latest Gallup poll is like about 17%, and earlier this year is like 9%, and it fluctuates. Yeah, that's them. right. It, it actually got down to the single digits for the first time in history, I believe. Yes, yes, exactly. And the media is not much higher than that. Um, and so, yeah. um, you, you know, it's that they have like the, uh, you know, the same problem. So, but yet again, we still have like one or two independents, one or two like third party people. It seems like two right. or three percent. I think it's people are distracted. That's one reason they have um, apathy would be another reason, um, mostly because distraction and uh, and um, and hopelessness, which I would say is cowardice personally. But but why do you think, um, you know, why why aren't and what can we do to get people to consider a, a different option like to like a lot of people say you know what i'm going to make my point by not voting you know at all and right. um, and let's pretend like let's say we had one year where there's a 10 percent turnout i mean that would send a message for sure but you know what the politicians would say they would say like well i'm just going to try harder to do what i can do and you're still going to have the same people in charge and then after a month or two they they'd forget about it and still pass you know dumb laws and instead of that's right boycotting the whole system completely why not just boycott the Democrats and the Republicans and choose Absolutely. someone else? And, uh, yeah, right on. And, and that's, you know, I, there, there's a saying that you can ignore politics, but politics won't ignore you. And, and that's absolutely true. And yeah, that, uh, that there, there you go. And um, and so the government, um, you know, someday maybe people will be been ashamed for being a Republican or, or, or a Democrat. Um, but uh, and, and just being so short sighted and, and not upholding their oath to the Constitution, which they swore to do. And um, so it, it's um, I don't know yeah, what else I, is going to make an impact. I mean, the Tea Party, what do they want? The Occupy Wall Street, they're only going to get results if they get someone in there 
that can right. actually represent them and, and, and present laws and champion laws and submit bills to Congress that is in their favor. I mean, it's nothing's going to change till we. Um, the media is not going to pay attention until one day all of a sudden they say like, wow, this year we had a 20 percent uh, wave of like independence, third party people. And maybe two years after that, um, it'll be even more, 25 percent than 30 percent, uh, et cetera. Um, go ahead. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think there's I think, uh, you know, one of the reasons is that a lot of people still identify themselves as Republicans and Democrats is because um they have certain uh, values that their uh, representatives in office don't actually hold. Uh, I, I think there's a big divide between you know the politicians and, and the Republican and Democrat parties versus the, the average you know citizen. Um, the, the politicians really uh, are, as they say, two wings of the same bird, and uh, you know they, they pretty much agree on most things. They they kind of differ on a, a, a few issues, but overall they they're all about uh, more government less freedom and and i think people are, are really it was slowly but now faster and faster waking up to that reality and uh and and i think once you know there's gone there, there there's right now there's a firestorm of liberty that's that's spreading across the country and, and it's gaining momentum and it's growing and i i truly believe that uh, you know, hopefully this year, uh, you know, a, a third party, a, a libertarian such as myself, uh, you know, will, will be elected to the Congress. But if, if it doesn't happen this year, next year, um, I, I think that the, the wave of political opinion is, is really finally starting to change because people are waking up to the realities you know, that I just went over. The, the, the two party system doesn't represent their best interests. Yeah, and Gary Johnson's running as president, and, and you know what, I hope he gets in the debates and, 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 and wins, but you know what's more realistic is us at the local level getting as many Congress people as we can, and if we can get, like, even if we get, like, 30 independents and, and third-party people, I mean, that's going to be making news. That's going to let people know. It might cause a chain reaction where people see, wow, you know, if that's possible, like, once one person stands up, other people are going to start standing up, and um, and so that's right. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, I, so if we keep doing the same thing over and over again. Now, there's you know I, I I was I changed my party affiliation to vote for Ron Paul this year, even though I've always been an independent, and I've voted for libertarians before, and I've even voted for Ralph Nader before because to me he's better than the other choices, even though I don't agree with all of his choices, but I agree with sure. enough of them on the big issues like the military, foreign policy, civil liberties, but um, I don't have to agree with him on and the issues I don't agree with him on. He's probably not going to be able to pass anyways because he needs a consensus, but the ones he can make a difference on, you know, to to me, that's just being practical and having common sense. And uh, so that's right. if you're trying to take over the Republican Party in the Ron Paul wing, I would say keep doing that. Like one of the best quotes I heard Ron Paul say in responses is when people asked him, are you trying to, you know, run on a message here or and try like a philosophical res revolution or are you trying to actually win? And he said, why can't I do both? Why can't right. we, you, you know, try to change the two parties at the same time, elect new people? Um, if the Republican candidate isn't as good, well, then we, that change hasn't occurred yet. And maybe we should elect you as a libertarian and um, and also still try. It doesn't mean we can't give up on trying to change the other parties. It doesn't mean we can't do both things at the simultaneously. Right. Um, and yeah, that's right. It, it's really it's two different philosophies. Um, you know, there, there's the it's kind of you know if you equate it to uh, you know uh, the the business world, you can either uh, you know join a, a, a huge company that uh, you know been around for for decades now, and uh, you know they they have a, a huge power structure, and you know you might work uh, you know 20 or 30 years trying to work your way up the system because you have new ideas that you want to change at the top of that company, or you can take the Libertarian Party perspective and be a, a, a competitor to that, to that company um, or that party, and, and, and you introduce your new ideas in the competing market, and you say, look, we have the better ideas. Everyone come join us. And, and so that's really the, the uh, kind of a, a metaphor to explain, you know, the, the, the difference in the two philosophies, and, uh, of course, I, you know, ch chose the Libertarian philosophy. Yes, and I, I think, you know, to me, 
that is the ultimate, like, um, we might not be there. We might not be 100 years away from there. We might be 1,000 years away from there. But eventually, wouldn't we hope to aspire to us all being responsible enough where we could, you know, be truly free? Um, uh, and, uh, and, and someday maybe we'll get there. It doesn't mean we can't aspire to that. And, and actually, if you look at the libertarian platform, those are practical things that I would agree on. One thing I would say is I, I do think people can get together collectively and have like public options just as long as you don't make it mandatory and and people have to pay into exactly what it costs you know and if they can save money doing that that's fine but anyways that's just my personal opinion on that one final thing, yeah i and, i, I yeah. agree you know i i'm a i'm a 100 advocate of doing things as voluntarily as possible so if a huge group of you know 20 million people gets together and says hey let's all pay into this system and, uh, you know, we'll have a board of directors and we'll do this whole thing as, you know, as a, uh, you know, a, a nonprofit or, or something like that. Absolutely, the government should allow them to do that. And, and that's really one of the problems with our current system is that the government does not allow people to do things like that on their own. Yeah, and in fact, they probably tried to do, you know, some companies that would find that a threat would pay off politicians, which they can do now, and um, right. have sure. them pass regulations. Just like, you know, I mean, people, if they want to be a barber or something, they have to have certifications. There's all these, like, um, groups that want to protect their industry, and, and, and that's another thing that could help. I mean, imagine if, like, a lot of nurses could do certain procedures that you would have to go to a hospital for, and they could charge, you know, whatever they would charge or, or whatever. And, I, and um, but what what is your uh, now this about one hour long and I appreciate it. I, it hasn't been dull at all. In fact, it's been um, a, a pleasure. What what has been um, what's your vision? Let's we talk about policy and stuff. A lot of people talk about policy and and laws and rules. But um, a lot of thing, I, things I think that people want to see um, is just what your vision is like because we're always bombarded with images and visions through our television um, of uh, just you know horrible doomsday things like. 2012 and stuff what what is your vision like if, if you know and I your ideal and yeah well I would say my my vision is just a freer society um, I, I believe in uh, I believe in people I believe that um, people generally want to do good um, and I, I, I believe that uh, you know right now we have a system where we, we say, you know, okay, people are bad, so let's elect people to, to govern o over other people that are bad. And it just kind of, you know, the, the more and more you get into that mindset, the less and less it, it makes sense. And, and what I'm saying is let's have a free society. Let's, let's believe in, in, in each other's ability to, uh, you know, exercise your rights peacefully. And, of course, there are always going to be people that infringe on other people's liberty, and that's why the government exists, is, is to protect those liberties. But that's the only reason it's supposed to exist, is, is to protect people's rights. The government does not give people rights. Your only rights come from, from really, from God, but you have natural rights. Um, you have, a, a, you know, rights to life, liberty, and property. You don't have any rights that depend on, on other people's, uh, you know, infringing other people's rights. And, and so I, I, I want to convey the message of liberty. I want people to to come around because I believe that that most or all, all people are libertarians at heart. You know, you, you isn't it most, really the golden rule? I mean, isn't that really what sure, it is? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. And and it's you know, uh, libertarians call it the non-aggression principle, but it's the same idea as the golden rule. It, all it says is, you leave me alone, you don't infringe on my life, I'll leave you alone, and I won't infringe on your life. And and the more we can do, uh, you know, have voluntary in, uh, interactions. And, you know, the, the freer and the more prosperous and the better and the, and the higher quality of a life we will enjoy. Yeah, this is something new. And um, it's, I mean, if you look through history, freedom is uh, a new idea that has sprouted and, and, and it's yet to even fully blossom. You know, we can make it better than any time in, in the past. And I, that's right. Now, how do yeah. I went to your website um, and, and people can visit their frets for Congress dot com. And um, that's the first district. Um, and so if you own a radio station, you know, you'll want to contact um, Kalen. And uh, if, if you have a, like a Ron Paul meetup or, or VFW meetup or whatever, I, I mean, a progressive meetup, just uh, Democrat, Republican, just, uh, it's, you know, where you want to do some questions and answers, I'm sure that would be welcomed, right? And I'm sure some donations and helping out with signs and, and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And, we, and we, you know, my email address is info at threatsforcongress.com. That's F-R-E-T-T-S for congress.com. Uh, you know, I also have a, a, a campaign phone line, 850-542-0042. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in, in uh, hooking up with the campaign in any way, you know, just, just contact us and we'll be glad to do it. All right, excellent. I mean, and, and it's it, like a lot of people say, they, some of my family get tired of me saying, you know, Ron Paul or whatever, but it's like, um, it's not about him. It's, it's about the issues. And uh, so, That's right. I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of it. You know, if what motivates you is not having another Republican and Democrat here, instead of just abstaining from voting at all, here's someone you can select. And um, and the great thing about Congress is we can elect someone new every two years. Uh, but I can tell you, uh, you're you're going to represent people much better than um, any Republican or Democrat um, can, as they've proven themselves. And I appreciate your time today. Um, I'll you know stay up to date and stay current with your campaign. And um, so I'll. Uh, talk to you after this interview closes and I'll just end it now and um, thank you very much uh, uh, Kalen Fretz uh, for Congress District 1 I appreciate it very much. Thanks again for having me it was a pleasure. Thanks sir.